Hello there, Mr. Sutton here bringing you these AB Calculus 511 Extra Practice Number 1 Solutions on FTC Integral Evaluation with Non-Polynomials. For this problem, I want the integral from 0 to 3 of basically the square root of x plus 1. So for this, I'm going to take my antiderivative here. I'm going to use my reverse power rule. And I have an x plus 1 inner function, so I actually don't need to do anything special for that since it's linear and it has a derivative of 1. So, using my reverse power rule, this 1 half bumps up to a 3 halves, and then I multiply by the reciprocal of 2 thirds. So I've got 2 thirds x plus 1 to the 3 halves, going from 0 to 3 on that. So I've got all this stuff with 3 plugged in, minus all this stuff with 0 plugged in. And I just have to evaluate now. So, let's see here. This stuff, I've got, this is essentially the... Uh, square root of 4 to the third power. Um, so that's going to be 8 times 2 thirds is 16 thirds. And then over here, I've got just 1 to whatever is just going to be 1. Times 2 thirds is 2 thirds, so minus 2 thirds. That one was a lot nicer to do. So that's then 14 thirds, which gives me choice D. On this problem, I've got the graph of F prime here. And I'm given that F of 0 is 1. We want the maximum value of f on the interval. So for this, I'm going to use the candidates test. So I have to test my endpoints of 0 and 6 in the f function, which I'm going to have to essentially use integrals of derivatives in order to find different values of f. And I'm also going to have to test critical values. Now, there's two critical values in here, at x equals 3, and this appears to be at x equals uh, 5 and a half. But now, if I'm looking for an absolute max, I only have to test local maxes, which means I just need places where f prime is going from positive to negative, like at x equals 3 here. Um, since f prime changes positive to negative only at x equals 3, that means that I don't actually have to test out this annoying 5.5 spot right here. Um, so I'm just going to disregard that. A local min cannot be the max for a whole function. All right, testing stuff out. We've got f of 0, which is actually 1. So we already have one endpoint. Now to find f of 3, I need to do f of 0, which again was 1, plus the integral from 0 to 3 of f prime. And the integral from 0 to 3 of f prime, I'm essentially just adding this triangle in here. Um, so I've got 1 plus 1 half times a base of 3 times a height of 2 to get that triangle area. Uh, this is just 1, let's see, the 1 half and the 2 cancel, so this is just 1 plus 3, which is 4. All right, let's see if we can do better than that with f of 6. Um, now, probably we won't be able to. I mean, we've acquired all this positive area, and we've, we lose a whole bunch of that area down here, and we only gain back a little sliver after this. Um, so if you were pressed for time, I would just take 4 and, and go with it. Um, but if you have time, we can also check out f of 6. So that's going to be f of 3 that we just found here. I'm going to be clever about this. That's f of 3, which is 4, plus the integral from 3 to 6 of f prime. Um, so I guess I could have started at 0 and added all this stuff in again. But, I mean, I already know what f of 3 is, so I'm just going to use that as my starting value now. All right, so to go from 3 to 6, I've got the initial 4 there, and then... I've got this negative triangle, so negative 1 half times a base of 5 halves times a height of 2. So that's going to be kind of annoying. Um, and then we're adding this other triangle in here. That's 1 half times a base of 1 half times a height of 2. So what does all this craziness come out to? So the, the 1 half and the 2 are going to cancel. So we're subtracting essentially 2.5 over here. We're adding 0.5 over here. Uh, so that's really 4 minus 2, which is just 2, which is not bigger than the 4 that we kind of knew was going to be the answer. Uh, so we get our max at x equals 3 then, and they wanted the maximum value itself, um, so that means we're going to pick d4. On this problem, I want to know which of the following of these is equal to the integral from 0 to pi of sine of x. 
So there's a clever way to do this problem if you remember what the graph of sine looks like. This was a no calculator question, so you really needed to remember what sine looked like. And if you remember that the area between 0 and pi on sine, that's that positive area on that the first part of the, the wave, um, if you remember that that's the same as the area uh, that's under cosine between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2, then you immediately could have picked choice A. Um, if you weren't um, remembering your, your functions and what they look like on a graph, you could have actually figured out the value of sine of x. So let's do that now. I'll do it the long way just to show you. Um, so that's going to be negative cosine for the antiderivative, evaluating that from 0 to pi. So we have negative cosine of pi plus cosine of 0. Well, cosine of pi itself is negative 1. Negative negative 1 is 1. This is just positive 1 over here, so that adds up to uh, 2. So we're looking for a function now, an integral that has a value of 2. Let's start with choice A. Uh, so antiderivative of cosine is sine. And let's evaluate that from negative pi over 2 to 2. So we've got sine of pi over 2 minus sine of negative pi over 2. Sine of pi over 2 is 1. That's the y value at 90 degrees. And we're doing 1 minus... Well, the sine of negative pi over 2, that's going to be negative 1. You're at the bottom of the unit circle. So 1 minus negative 1 is 2, which matches the, the value that we had in the beginning. Um, so since this was a just pick one of them and not pick all that apply, we're actually done. Choice A is our answer. Glad we didn't have to try the other four, right? On this problem, between the interval 0 to 4 of the following, what's the greatest value of x such that this first function is bigger than this other function. So one way to do this would be to actually plug in all five of these values to these two functions and compare. Kind of annoying. Another way you could do this is graph the two integral functions between 0 and 2 and see what happens. Now, why did I pick 0 and 2 when they gave me the interval from 0 to 4? Well, look at the answer choices. Right? I mean, really, I could have done everything between 1 and 2, but I like to see the y-axis, so I, I threw 0 a bone there. All right, so let's graph these. To graph these on my calculator, I'm going to go to y equals, and I'm going to do math 9 to pull up an integral here. I've got the integral from 0 to x, and what am I putting in here? Well, you could use t's on your calculator. Um, it actually doesn't care if you reuse the variable, even though that's not mathematically proper notation. Your calculator figures out what you mean. This is one of those rare times where that happens. So I'm just going to use x's because the x button is faster than pressing alpha t. So there we go. And we've got dx. And uh, I'm also going to change how this line looks. I'm going to compare these two. I'm going to make this a thicker line just so I can tell the difference between this and the next function I'm going to enter which, if I do math 9, this is going to be the integral from 2 to x of, let's see, just x here, x dx. So a much simpler function. Now, let me go to window. And again, I'm only going to consider between 0 and 2 because that's where my answer choices are clustered. I don't really need to look all the way from 0 to 4. Doing zoom 0, let's see what we end up with. So this might take a while because you're, you're, you're forcing your calculator to do integrations over and over again, even though these aren't very complex functions. So waiting, waiting, waiting. I'm going to wait off camera. So let's tune in to see that first function going. So there it is. Um, it's very slow. I'm going to do the rest off camera. And I'll tune in again to watch this other function go. Now, this takes, I believe, at least a full minute when all is said and done, just after you press the, the zoom zero button. Um, but it's worth it, because otherwise, you're trying out all these other values here, and that's going to take even longer. All right, so we want to know the greatest value where this first function, which is this solid line, is uh, bigger than the other function. Um, so that happens at this intersection point. After this point, we, we start um, being less than that second function. So let me do second trace to see what the intersection is there. And I'll just press enter one, two, three times. And it's thinking a little bit here. Um, it's working a lot. It probably would have been faster if we moved 
our little spider closer, but we end up with 1.388 and some change. So there's what I've got. So the first integral is greater until x equals 1.3887. Um, so taking a look at our answer choices then, that would be answer choice B. On this problem, I'm trying to take the integral from 0 to e of this piecewise function. Since I have a border value of 1 that's between 0 and e, the limits of integration, I need to split this up around the border value into two separate integrals. So I'm going to be taking the integral from 0 to the border value 1 of just this x rule here. And to that, I'm going to add whatever I get from the integral of a 1 to e of my second rule, 1 over x. All right, let's take some antiderivatives. So we've got 1 half x squared from 0 to 1. And to that, I'm adding, let's see, this is going to be ln of absolute value of x from 1 to e. And going ahead and doing these, um, I'm just going to pull out this 1 half. And now I'm going to do 1 squared minus 0 squared inside there. And then over here, I've got ln of e minus ln of 1. Evaluating this, this is just 1 half times 1 squared, which is just 1 half. And then over here, ln of e, that's actually 1. ln of 1 is 0, so this is just plus 1, which comes out to 3 halves, giving us answer choice b. For this one, I want the integral from 0 to 1 of radical x times x plus 1. So before you start trying to figure out how to take the integral of this product, why don't we just multiply this all together? I mean, this is just x to the 1 half times x plus 1. So that would be x to the 3 halves plus x to the 1 half. All right, going from left to right now, taking some antiderivatives. This first one gets bumped up to an exponent of 5 over 2, multiply by the reciprocal of 2 fifths, so 2 fifths x to the 5 halves. And this next one becomes x to the 3 halves times 2 thirds, going from 0 to 1. So we've got all this stuff with 1 plugged in minus all this stuff with 0 plugged in. And although these are kind of annoying fractions everywhere, um, the good news is you're plugging in 1s and zeros, so that's not so bad. So then we end up with essentially 2 fifths plus 2 thirds minus 0. Uh, so 2 fifths plus 2 thirds then. We need a common denominator. That's going to be 15ths. So here we've got 6 fifteenths plus 10 fifteenths, which comes out to 16 fifteenths. Choice C. For this problem, we have this integral function, which actually has an x squared in the upper limit of integration. That's kind of wild. Uh, and how many points in the closed interval from 0 to radical pi, also wild, does the instantaneous rate of change of f equal the average rate of change of f? So we essentially need a rock and i rock for the f function and see how many times those line up. OK, so let's get the a rock expression first. So we're essentially doing f of radical pi minus f of 0 over radical pi minus 0. So that's going to be, here's our numerator now. We've got the integral from 0 to radical pi squared of sine of t minus all that stuff with a 0 squared up there. And that's all going to be over radical pi minus 0. I can simplify this a little bit. This is an empty integral, this second one. Um, so I don't really need that in there. And obviously, 0 I don't need to write. So here's a simplified version of that. And since I'm going to need to see where this lines up with I rock on the calculator, I'm actually going to plug this in my calculator right now and just get a constant value that I'm going to store in my calculator. So I've entered this crazy expression in my calculator. I mean, I could do it by hand, but it's a calculator problem, so why bother? And I'm going to store this now as alpha a for a rock. I mean, you could use any letter you wanted, but there it is. Now whenever I call up a, I get this weird number instead. Cool. Now I need i rock. So I need to take the derivative of f with respect to x. Since I'm already uh, taking the derivative of an integral function here, using my first fundamental theorem of calculus, I can just replace the dummy variable with this upper limit of integration, x squared, so sine of x squared. And then I have to multiply by the derivative of this upper limit using my chain rule. So that would be a 2x that I'm multiplying by. And now I'm just going to graph this and the value that I got for my a rock and see how many times they cross on my calculator. So here we go on my calculator. I've already got i rock entered in as y1. For y2, 
I'm just going to do alpha A because I stored this value. And, and you'll see why I'm doing this. If you just plug this whole thing in as a function, your calculator to graph it is going to keep calculating it over and over and over again, which is going to take a long time. But this is just a simple number that it can just keep using. Um, so now let's go to window. And I'm going from 0 to, they said, the square root of pi there. So square root of pi, whatever that comes out to. There we are. Zoom 0. Let's see where these things cross. And then we'll actually use the, the intersect function. Uh, so here's your IROC graphing right now. And there's this, uh, that constant that equals this integral expression here. And it looks like we're intersecting in two spots. Now the really good news on this problem when you set these things equal and find those intersections is that you don't actually need to calculate what the intersections were, just count them. There's two of them, choice C. For this one, if f is the antiderivative of x squared over 1 plus x to the fifth, such that f of 1 is 0, we want f of 4. Um, so basically, we need to use our fundamental theorem of calculus on this one. f of 4 is going to equal f of 1 plus the integral from 1 to 4 of f prime. Well, f of 1 is just 0. They gave us that. What's f prime, though? Well, they said that f is the antiderivative of this stuff. That means x squared over 1 plus x to the fifth is the derivative of f. This right here is f prime. So that's what we're going to integrate from 1 to 4. Now, if the answer choices didn't make it clear, this is a calculator question. So let's go do that on the calculator. So I'm doing integral from 1 to 4 of that crazy fraction, dx, which is going to come out to about 0.376 if I round off. And that's going to be choice D. For this no calculator question, we want the integral from 1 to e of this fraction. To make my life a little bit easier, I'm going to simplify this by dividing x squared and 1 both by x. So I really have the integral from 1 to e of x plus 1 over x. And those are a little bit easier to take the antiderivatives of now. So this is going to be, let's see here, 1 half x squared. And this is going to be ln of absolute value of x, antiderivative of 1 over x. All of that from 1 to e. So I've got all this stuff with e plugged in minus all this stuff with 1 plugged in. Obviously, this is not one of the answer choices, so we need to simplify this using our knowledge of logarithms and whatnot. Uh, so I have 1 half e squared, that's not going to change, plus the ln of e, that's just 1. Over here, this is 1 half plus ln of 1 is 0. Um, so we're essentially subtracting 1 half. And then we've got, let's see, this will be 1 half e squared plus 1 half. And you could, if you wanted to, uh, move the e squared and the 1 together in the numerator to be e squared plus 1 over 2. So let's see here. That's going to be e squared plus 1 over 2. That's choice B. There we go. For this problem, we have a graph of f prime. And we know that f of 2 is 1. We want to find f of negative 5. We're going to use our FTC to get to negative 5. So f of negative 5 is going to equal this initial value we know of f of 2 plus the integral from 2 to negative 5 of f prime. So we're taking the value of 2 and adding the change from 2 to negative 5 to get to negative 5. So this value at uh, x equals 2, that's going to be 1. And now for the actual integrating here, we're starting at 2 and working our way backwards to negative 5. Um, so as we go here, we have this semicircle. So this would be 1 half times pi times the radius 2 squared. Since it's below the x-axis, it would normally be negative. But since we're going from right to left, that also throws in another negative. The two negatives cancel, so we're actually adding. This actually is positive area if we go backwards. So we're adding 1 half pi times 2 squared. And now this triangle here above the x-axis, again, since we're going from right to left, this ends up being negative area rather than positive. So this is 1 half times a base of 3 times a height of 2, but we're subtracting that now. So we've got 1 plus, well, this here is just pi, and this is the, the half and the 2 are canceling, so minus 3. 
So that's going to be, let's see, 1 minus 3 is negative 2. So 2 pi minus 2. And that's actually an answer choice, choice A.